Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at Sternberg's triangular theory of love and the types of love. Now we all know that love is an essential part of life. Most people get to experience love in some form or another in their lives but very few people actually understand how it actually works and what they're actually experiencing when they experience love. Now, human conversations around love can also often be quite confusing and complicated. This is partly because when people refer to love, they could be feeling things differently to their partner. Or, in other words, they could be referring to a different type of love than their partner. And to strengthen our understanding of love, Professor Robert Sternberg came up with the triangular theory of love and he also came up with the types of love. So what is the triangular theory of love? Now Sternberg proposed that love is actually made up of three components. Intimacy, passion and decision or commitment. Okay, now let's look at these three components in detail. Intimacy refers to the feeling of warmth in a relationship. So this is the emotional bond between the people involved. In loving relationships, it refers to the feeling of closeness, connectedness, bondedness, etc. Passion refers to the feeling uh, and, and the desires that actually lead to physical attraction, romance and sexual affiliations. Decision commitment. Now this aspect can have short term and long term implications. Decision refers to the short term view of loving someone and commitment refers to the long term view of maintaining that love for that person. Okay. Now, these aspects, according to Sternberg, don't necessarily have to work in tandem. So someone can actually love another person without harboring long-term intentions. And conversely, someone can be committed to another person, provide for the person without actually acknowledging love for that person. So they can actually uh, work individually. For the sake of uh, remembering these three components, you can actually think of one being the emotional aspect, the second being the physical aspect, uh, and the third being the plan of action between people. Okay, now these three components interact with one another can, and can also influence one another. And it is the interaction of these three components that actually gives rise to the types of love. Okay, and the way the uh, the components can influence one another can, for instance, be such that greater intimacy can actually lead to greater passion. So there is interaction between these components and the types of love that we are going to discuss now between people depends on the presence or ap the absence of one or two of these components. OK, now, as seen in the graphic here, the components tend to interact with one another and it's, these, it's this interaction that can create these types of love. This will all be clarified to you as we look at the types individually. Starting with non-love. Now, when all three components, all three essential components are actually absent, the individuals uh, concerned are in a state of indifference. So they don't actually care about one another in any way and there is absolutely no connection and this type of love is called non-love okay now the next type is liking this form of love uh, exists when intimacy is present but there is no passion or commitment so this can also actually be termed as friendship because uh, when we speak about types of love we are not essentially only speaking about the love between uh, uh, emotionally and uh, we're, we're not we're not talking about a romantic relationship necessarily we are talking about relationships in general okay now the next type is infatuated love or infatuation so this type of love only has passion but doesn't have any intimacy or commitment okay now this happens between people uh, who have purely lustful desires for one another and don't have any intimate or emotional ties with each other okay now such ties can actually such relationships can actually uh, develop into romantic relationships or can actually very spontaneously disperse as well okay when the initial desire tends you know fades out eventually now the next type of love is empty love 
very important. So this is a type wherein there is commitment, but there is no passion or intimacy. And this can happen when a couple is only together because they have to be with each other for some reason, or they are tied down to each other for some social or legal reasons, you never know. And they can also, this can also happen to couples who are only with each other for, for a common purpose like maybe children or financial security etc so it is a type of love that can that, that that can be seen in the world and in many cases such relationships uh, could have actually started off having more than just this component but the the only the other components tend to fade out with time and literally leave the mo the, the relationship empty that's why it's called empty love so it's got commitment but there is no passion or intimacy or passion or intimacy or both of them have actually died out okay now the next type of love is romantic love now this is a type of love where there's passion and intimacy but no commitment so partners in this type of relationship tend to care for each other and desire each other without actually having a concrete plan for the future at the present moment okay so with the passage of more time, there can be a commitment or a plan that can come into place. With the passage of time, these relationships can actually develop great potential as the foundations in such relationships are laid right. The next type is companionate love. Here, there's intimacy and commitment, but there's no passion. So this is essentially a stronger form of friendship as there's also commitment to one another in friendship. You know, certain long-term relationships with weaker foundations can actually fall into this category as the attraction factor fades out and there's still a strong bond between the people concerned. And, and also strong friendships and ties with close family members can also fall into this category. Yeah. Now, the next type is fatuous love. So here... There's passion and commitment, but there's no intimacy. So this is essentially a very turbulent form of love, wherein the people concerned develop passion for one, for one another when the relationship is new and also, you know, end up forming a committed relationship. You know, this can include moving in with each other, marriage, etc. with each other before bonding at a non-passionate level. So before there is any sort of an emotional bond, people in, in such relationships get carried away and form commitments with one another and are passionate with one another. And such relationships are usually under the scrutiny of the people around the couple as they, they think that these can be impulsive relationships, yeah? And such relationships unfortunately have quite a high likelihood of failure. Now the next type is consummate love yeah so this is the perfect sort of love so this is the form of love which has all three components this is an ideal form of love uh, and it's the type of love that's usually depicted as as ideal in 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 various digital media v but in reality very few people can actually experience this type of love for long periods most successful and ideal relationships will experience this form of love in phases and will slip into other forms of love time and again. So there will be phases where the couple will actually face uh, experience this type of love, but then it will switch back to another form. In such relationships, companions uh, tend to enjoy great passion with one another uh, for years in the relationship, and their happiness, the happiness element of, of the individual in a relationship is actually tied to the happiness of uh, their partners. So this is the most ideal form of life, uh, so form of love, beg your pardon. Now, we have actually covered the types of love. We have actually looked at the, the types of love as proposed by Robert Sternberg. Uh, if possible, I'd like to like you to get involved here. I'd like you to, uh, to share with me the the types of love that you have experienced you know or or if there's not a definite type and if you think that it's a blend 
of, of multiple types, I'd like you to, uh, to use the comment section and and enlighten us and you know maybe open up a discussion i'd be really interested in that and to widen our understanding of relationships but uh sternberg also highlighted the influence of of love stories that we get exposed to from different media like books television stories uh or from personal contacts uh with family friends etc now according to sternberg these stories that we get exposed to can have an impact on our lives and our decision making when it comes to choosing partners, okay? So I think this is quite an interesting topic to look into. So please also use the comment section to let me know if you're interested in a tutorial on this topic and I'll, I'll work on it for you, yeah? So use the comment section for two things. Use it to, uh, to let me know of your experience with love and also let me know if you're interested in finding out about uh, the influence of love stories on our relationships. And as always, as always, thank you very much for your attendance to this tutorial. And uh, please keep liking the content on this channel. If you're new here, please subscribe uh, and uh, share, share the content, share this tutorial and the other tutorials from this channel. And uh, please keep taking care of yourself and your family. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.